Okay, great. So firstly, uh, do we have anything else to discuss? Any questions, comments? Okay, if no, then maybe let Leo to present. I will just uh, start presenting. Yeah. So everyone should see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So good, good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm gonna give a talk in the outer loop, uh, outer loop power wireless things network. Um, so this is the agenda or table of content that we present following the order. So first of all, I will give an introduction to the RPE project, and then I will give a um, project introduction and then why we are doing the project. And then next uh, is the project details, and then following off that is uh, the hardware components I am using in the project, and also uh, what kind of a communication protocol is in the project. And then the next uh, will be the server side software. You know, uh, how can we achieve the uh, data? And how can we analyze the data? And then the next will be the result achievement, which mainly uh, on the two part. One is the power consumption, which is the ultra low power consumption, and also the uh, how the communication protocol is built, which can be reflected by the data frame loss. And then last one, I will give a conclusion of that. So first of all, uh, the, the introduction of the RPRE, the RPRE project basically is the advanced research project agent. Uh, uh, Leo, the... yeah, just to make sure that are you uh, showing the content, a uh, table of the content, or you're showing the first slide? The slide no, the, the content, I'm still on the table. Okay. okay, no problem, just to make sure, okay. Yeah. So the RPRE project basically is advanced research project agent. Uh, aimed on the energy projects. And then the RPRE is uh, aimed to uh, promoting the new technology on the energy parts. So uh, the next will be the interaction and the motivation. So why we are doing this project I and mean, what kind of uh, 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 technology we are using on this project. So currently, you know, due to the size of the, of the field in the United States, so it is really hard to uh, find the uh, the crops problem, which is you know farmer right now rely on the periodical visual inspection of the crops and they detect the problem. The problems uh, include you know insect bites or weeds or the pest ground outbreaks, so which can you know uh, harm uh, which can harm the the whole field. I mean um, you know due to the size of the field, it is really hard to catch a problem quickly. You know, you cannot just walk through the field, you know, to check every, you know, um, you know, soybeans, uh, corns, or like, for example, the so uh, sojourns. And also it is e efficient to use the farm's resources and the time. So because of that, um, we got the funding of the, you know, to solve these kind of problems, you know, can uh, help the farmer to find the, you know, uh, the problem quickly. So that's why we are going to the project details. So on the project details, so in this project, uh, we have aimed to build the sensor and in the wireless communication, you know, protocols to help the farmers to detect the problem in a time fashion. And then with the um, fabricate the sensor, the sensor can detect the gas, which can, uh, which released by the plant whenever you know gets harmed. So this is basically from the side of architect uh, agriculture. So when the you know when the you know crops, for example, the corns or sorghums get bite by the insect. So the corns or like sorghums can um, emit a kind of gas which called the hexanol gas or indoor indoor or indoor gas. So this sensor can detect this gas, you know, sensitivity or, you know, density, you know, and then can trigger, you know, the, the following devices. And then also this project can alert, you know, alert can be sent to the farmer or the internet whenever, you know, there's a, uh, wherever there's a uh, gas detected. 
And then the next one would be uh, the system need to be really low cover since you know each of the crops will have a uh, like whole season. The, the whole season means you know three to four months. Um, three to four months, you know, over the summer and in the fall season, uh, fall, fall, fall season. So the system needs to be only weak when the gas is detected. And then the sensor device battery need to be, uh, need to last for a full season, you know, we cannot just go to the field to replace the battery, you know, easily because of the size of the field. And then also the, the last will be system need to be communicated over long distance and in uh, suboptimal conditions. Uh, we don't want to place so many sensors, you know, in the field. So that's why we're gonna get the uh, kind of longest distance, you know, when we place those kind of devices in the field. Um, for this project is the, you know, uh, combined by the different groups. So the hexane sensor developed by other students in the group, in the big group. And then the analog circuit to amplify the sensor signal designed by the you know another uh, group of students. And then we are working on, I mean, the Dr. Minyu G and I, and then also previous students, uh, um, Brian, we are working on the sensor reading and the network communication uh, and, the and the implementation. So you can see from the right picture. So basically this is the hexano sensor, uh, which developed by the the student in the, in the University of Utah, which can uh, detect the hexane sensor, a hexane gas. And then this is the picture we took uh, from the field test. So the sensor network, the sensor network, uh, uh, the sensor devices will be placed around the field. For example, you can see from the right, uh, right picture. So this is basically the field in the, uh, this is basically the field that you know we're gonna uh, we're gonna place. So we're gonna place several sensor devices into the different location of the field, and then we're gonna have the gateway on the edge of the field. And then when the gas is detected, the sensor will send the signal to the gateway device, and the the gateway device will send this message over the internet to notify the user, and the user can just log into the internet to see those devices, uh, to see those uh, messages. And then the sensor is uh, uh, the sensor is wirelessly sends the data to the gateway, and then the gateway can connect to the internet through the LTE module. Uh, this is the uh, kind of main scheme of the network. So the sensor device technical include you know we had to build the sensor device into a small size and a battery power the sensor device, and then it, it should be easy to replace and then recover. And then um, the next one will be the sensor, uh, the sensor device should, you know, um, consume low power. You know, this, uh, for example, maybe one battery or two battery need to last for the whole season. And then uh, the sensor device should transmit the signal through the long range. And then no matter the, you know, the humidity or the temperature, and then uh, the sensor device should have the reliable communication to avoid the loss of messages. We can, uh, you know, tolerate a small, you know, size, small part of the lost messages, but we cannot just tolerate so many uh, lost of messages. The next one is the gateway device technical. So the gateway device should uh, have a wireless communication, you know, with the sensor devices, and then the battery power to the uh, to last the full season. However, because the gateway is uh, placed uh, to the edge of the you know field, so it is easy you know it is easier than the sensor node you know to be replaced uh, for the battery. And then for the server side, the server you know the online server should have a data viewing and a logging. And then the server uh, should notify the user whenever there is a message, or you know the user can just log into the server to see the um, messages. Uh, so next one, I'm gonna give a uh, uh, introduction for those uh, hardware components I have uh, play, uh, you know, I have uh, used in the system. So first of all is the the radio I have used. So the radio we are, uh, have used in this project is called a LoRa module. The LoRa reference the long range module. 
So the LoRa is basically a physical layer IF modulation technologies uh, developed by the Semitech. And in the, in the United States, the LoRa uses 915 megahertz frequency for the transmission. However, if you use the LoRa module in the different regions, it might you know, uh, give, uh, you, you have to uh, use the different uh, frequencies. For example, in the Europe, uh, the LoRa module uses, uh, I think, uh, 860 megahertz. And then the LoRa designed for communication over long distance with the same power as other scams. For example, the, the other scams, uh, the FS key, OS key, this kind of scam. The LoRa module we have chosen because of the uh, advantages. So the advantages of the LoRa module has two, basically many uh, two for the, our project. One is the low power. The LoRa module here uh, consumes very low power when you know uh, when the device is under the sleep or the a weak or transmission uh, mode, and in the LoRa module theoretically can transmit to the sixteen kilometers uh, wireless communication, but through the testing we cannot achieve that high you know that long range, but uh, the range we have tested is enough for this project. But the dis disadvantages of the LoRa module, which is slow because the LoRa module uses just 915 megahertz of the frequency for the data transmission. Uh, I have a one comment here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, LoRa is not developed by uh, Semtag. So, I mean, they did, I mean, I think, so our LoRa module uh, was developed by, by this company, right? But there are some other companies also are developing the LoRa module. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Dr. G, so I have checked this green part of the, of the, of the part, you know, the, the green part of the, this uh, LoRa module mm. is called uh, something X, SX1276. This developed by Semitech maybe? And then, but the whole body is just uh, uh, used uh, by uh, another company. I'm not sure is that correct. Okay, you, you mean, so the LoRa module is exactly. only developed by this company. There's no other, uh, any other well, I mean, this oh, device, this device, this- No, this no, device. no, no, it's not true. We used, we, we, we used different uh, LoRa chip before. Okay. Yeah, it, it, so, so we need to be careful here, right? This is one company that is developing LoRa module. There are others. Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So for the sensor, for the sensor node, the sensor node is uh, battery powered, and then the sensor node can detect the gas, and then can send the the message over LoRa to the gateway, and then um, when the sensor node is uh, is not doing the detecting of the gas, so the, the sensor node should sleep to save more powers. Uh, the sensor node can also be called the end, you know, node. So for the sensor sensor node side, this the uh, uh, composition of the sensor node side. So we have the sensor which can detect the uh, hexanol or indoor, indoor gas, and then the, indoor, the, the, the gas will get amplified by the amplified circuit. And then uh, when the signal is uh, you know, amplified, then the signal can transmit to the MCU, then the MCU is uh, connected with the LoRa, then through the LoRa, the communication will be built. Uh, for the MCU, the MCU uh, communicated with the LoRa use the uh, SPR protocol, and then the MCU send message over LoRa whenever the sensor circuit detects gas. Um, the connection between the sensor and amplifier and the MCU just use a single wire uh, for the interrupt. Uh, the MCU and the LoRa development, uh, we have two. So the MCU uh, we are using on this project right now is called STEM 32 l 51 So it's a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M0 MCU uh, from the uh, STM. Uh, the, goal for this, uh, the goal for this MCU because of the low power. And then we also customize the uh, PCB to allow you know for the optimized low power design, and then the LoRa 
uh, for this project right now, we are using the RFM 95W, which we just showed on the previous uh, slides. And then this can enable the long distance uh, communication. So on the right side, we have two pictures. So the left one, which is the purple one, we call that the G2 is the generation, uh, second generation of the PCB. So this one uh, has the MCU on it, but it has to use the pin connection uh, to the LoRa. However, for the right for the right one, uh, we have integrated the MCU and in the LoRa into a single bar to further uh, reduce the power consumption. Uh, the second is the gateway device. Um, the gateway device is kind of edge of the, you know, um, kind of like uh, the local device. So the gateway device should be always on and listen for the LoRa message from the end of the, from the sensor node. And then the, the gateway device can forward uh, the message and the message location to the server side of the software. The gateway device uh, should be placed at the edge, edge of the field. And then because of the, uh, because of the gateway is placed on the, at the edge of the field. So the gateway has the fuel constraints on the size and the power consumption. So for this current, uh, uh, for, for the current uh, uh, perspective, we do not really care about the power consumption of the gateway. So this, the, uh, this uh, uh, the parts of the gateway head. So the gateway has the LoRa module, which can receive the signal from the uh, sensor, sensor node side, and then the MCU also. The LTE module, which can uh, publish the data from the local to the internet. So the, the right picture is the gateway uh, physical loop, you know, the, the physical picture we have taken. Um, the gateway has the LoRa module, which we just uh, talked about, and then the gateway always uh, has always on MCU, you know, to receive a LoRa message, and wake up as the high power LT uh, develop development board, which is the the one uh, shows the light on, and it can communicate with the LoRa uh, with LT over the UART protocol. And the gateway implemented LTE CCAT M1 uh, development board by the particle, uh, which is cellular LT development. The gateway has the Baron LTE, you know, and they also use the, uh, the LTE module and the constraints. The, uh, the, the gateway ha has the MCU on board. So, next one will be the communication protocol we have uh, applied in the system. The communicate protocol, first of all, is the LoRa. So uh, the LoRa has the main two uh, adjustable parameters. One is the spreading factors, and then one is the coding rate. Because we want to achieve uh, the longer distance, so we set the spreading factor to the largest, and then we set it the coding rate to be the smallest to achieve the longest distance communication. Uh, also, the the forwarding message in the communication in the communication protocols, the forwarding uh, the message forwarding is built in the in the communication protocol, which is the uh, um, called the radio head library. And an additional intermediate node, we also call it as a relay module, is required is required for the data messages uh, forwarding. And then relay module is always done and ready to forward the messages. And then uh, with the relay module, we could achieve nearly double range of the regular uh, wireless communication. So this uh, scheme is basically, you know, uh, how the uh, how the message is transmitted uh, with the with the relay module. Once we get the uh, data on the sensor node, then the sensor node will message to the gateway through the relay. However, the relay will not change anything of the data. We just forward in the the sensor node IDs to the to the gateway. When the gateway give the response to the sensor node, so the gateway sh uh, should uh, first send the messages or should send the replies to the to the relay, and then relay will forward uh, will forward the, the reply from gateway to the sensor node. 
um, the LTE communication to the internet, we uh, we use the uh, platform called the Particle Console. So MT MQTT was uh, used to send data to the lo from local to the internet. Uh, the MQTT is widely used the standard protocol for the IoT messages transmission, and then the MQTT program publish uh, and uh, publish uh, publishes the the data to any of the subscribers, and it is lightweighted and then uh, easy to implement it. So there are a lot of uh, uh, library have been already uh, implemented. We can you know you which you can just borrow from there and then to implement to your project. Um, now I'm gonna give uh, the introduction about the server side of software. So the system overview, we have the field devices, which also kind of call the local devices. We have the sensor node, we have the we have a GUI, or if we need it, we have the relay module on that. And then for the server side software, we have the MQTT server, uh, which uh, you know, uh, for the IoT module to publish the data to the to the internet. And then we have the intermediate program, uh, which writing by the Python programs. Uh, can just uh, store all the data from MQTT server to the to a database. We uh, save the data, and then we have a uh, Grafana called the Grafana Data Web Server, uh, which can um, allow the user to view the data from the database. Yeah, just uh, uh, said that MQTT server can publish the messages to any subscribers, include the network claims phones and the, the intermediate programs. And then the inter, intermediate program is writing by the Python that store the messages from uh, the MQTT server to the InfluxDB uh, database. And then the InfluxDB database is a time series database uh, and also is optimized for the logging. So the time series database, which means uh, all the data is stored uh, based on the time of the public uh, publishing. So it is uh, uh, easy for the users to uh, to locate the time. And also the intermediate program writing by the Python is uh, running a, a virtual machine is, which is hosted by the digital uh, ocean. And then the Grafana uh, data web server uh, is, developed by, is developed by Grafana Labs. And then the Grafana uh, is open source visualization a web application, and then, uh, it allows collect, collect the data to be read from anywhere. And it is a simple interface, is visible from uh, any platform, which means you know any browsers, you can just log into your account and you can see the data. And it is shareable by the different users. Um, as long as you share the, you know, the username and then the password name anyone has that can just uh, get access to the to the grafana uh, web view uh, web viewer and it, uh, for the for the data you have seen from grafana if you need to uh, impl uh, plot it or tracking the data it is pretty easy and in the right picture is just uh, a screenshot of the of the grafana viewer so now the most important of the project is the, how the achievement, how the result we have achieved. Uh, basically, this is the size. This is the, the size of the of the uh, protocol. So we can see the size is very small. We have see the um, the MCU and the LoRa, which is only uh, kind of three centimeters. And then for the whole box of the. Um, MCU LoRa and in the signal processing unit and also the battery is just a little bit size than the regular credit card. Uh, the important of the project is uh, how the power consumption. Uh, from uh, multiple testing of the power consumption, we have achieved a very low power consumption, which can satisfy the requirement of the project. Uh, because we change the Protocol from uh, we change the prototype from the second generation to the third generation, and they have also tested both generations power consumption. So for the second generation, which means the 
uh, the MCU board and in the LoRa board is separated. It uses the pin connections for the transmission. Uh, the deep sleep mode, the deep sleep mode, which means whenever there's no uh, gas detected, the MCU is under the sleep. It only consumes uh, uh, 736 microamps, which equals to 2.43 milliwatt because we have used the uh, 3.3 power supply. And then when the MCU just wake up, we uh, tested it consumed 8.0 milliwatt. No, sorry, 8.0 milliamps, which equal to 26.4 milliwatt. And then when the MCU and the LoRa both wake up, it consumes uh, 17.4 milliamp, which equal to uh, 57.4 milliwatt and then during the transmission mode it consumes around the uh, uh 89 milliamp and which means equals to 209 uh 293.7 milliwatt but you know during the transmission the transmission only to will only take uh the few seconds so even the transmission power consumption is larger is around like uh, 300 milliwatt but because of uh, the the time is just uh, short, so we don't need to really worry about the power consumption during the transmission mode. And then also we tested the the third generation uh, of the protocol, which means the MCU and the LoRa is integrated together into a small uh into a, like a tiny uh, PCB bar, and then the the power consumption uh. For that is deep sleep mode, we achieve uh, 0 0.58 milliwatt. And then the MC just wake up, we have achieved the 24.7 milliwatt. And then when MC and the Laura post wake up, uh, we achieve uh, uh, 30.4 milliwatt. And then during the transmission mode, it only takes 250.8 uh, milliwatt. And then from the comparison of the uh, the second generation and the third generation, we can see the power during the sleep mode is reduced to the uh, almost the one one quarter of the you know the second generation. So that is why we uh, designed and implemented the the PCB from the second generation to the third generation. And in the the second the factor, you know, can reflect the. The communication in the project is the how um, reliable of the communication in this project, and then the reliability in this project is uh, reflected by the data frame loss. Um, there are there are different uh, there are many different uh, testings has been done. Uh, you know with the different uh, scenarios. So first of all is the indoor testing. The indoor testing we tested is around the ten meters. And then the both uh, sensor node and the gateway is placed on the on the table, which is around the one meters height. Uh, with the tons of the testing, we have achieved the data frame loss is 0.5, which is very low. 0.5 percent, sorry, which is very low. And then we also have done the outdoor testings for the since one, we test the the distance as around the 200 meters in a parking lot without barriers. The sensor node is placed in a one meter, one point five meters high, and then the gateway is also placed uh, uh, one point five meters uh, meters high. Uh, the day frame loss we achieved is zero, which means uh, all two hundred transmission has been successfully uh, received by the gateway and also published to the online, and we can see those uh, two hundred transmission from the uh, from the uh, internet. And then the second uh, sense is uh, parking lot, you know, open parking lots with the barrier. You know, for example, the buildings or like cars uh, in between of the sensor node and the gateway. The both gateway and the sensor node uh, has been placed in the 1.5 meters height. And then from this testing, we achieve 0.5% of the data frame loss, which is also very low where uh, we accept this kind of uh, data frame loss. And then the next one is the 
from a real field testing, which is the Nebraska research field testing. And then there are uh, two scenarios testing has been done in there. And then both of them has uh, distance uh, around 400 meters in a soybean field. Um, the first scenario is uh, the sensor node is placed on the ground. And then the gateway is placed in the two meters height. And with the testing uh, data, we have shown that the data frame loss rate is, is around 11%. Sorry, I have a typo there. So it, which is 11%. And the second one is uh, the sensor node is placed in the one meters height and the gateway is placed in the two meters height. And then the data frame loss is 1.5%. 1, 1. Here, we, uh, we have measured the soybean, you know, we have measured the soy, uh, soybean, the, the height of the soybean. So the height of soybean is around 1.2 meters. So which is when the sensor node is placed to the one, one meters height is almost uh, on the top of the soybean. And then there are more uh, testings have been done in the, in the tree of the Solid City, which is on the backyard of the, uh, uh, of the University of Utah. So I have a, you know, a kind of uh, show the data here. Uh, I have done with the three different uh, distance of the testing. One is 200 meters. And then when the sensor node and in the, the gateway both place on the ground, I have achieved 1.5% of the data frame loss. And then when the sensor node is placed in the 1.5 meters height and in the gateway is placed to the ground, I have achieved a 0.5 uh, data frame loss. And then when the sensor node is placed uh, to the ground and the gateway placed in the 1.5 meters height, I have achieved a uh, zero data frame loss. And then the last one is the uh, sensor node placed to the uh, 1.5 height and in the we also placed in the 1.5 meters height, I have achieved the zero uh, percent of the data frame loss. And in the 300 meters, the reason of the 300 meters uh, has a little bit higher uh, data frame loss because the when I have placed the, the sensor node, I have placed on the back of the uh, very, really thin uh, trees. So that's why I think that's uh, um, a higher data frame loss is uh, you know different loss achieved for the 300 meters, but relatively uh, the 300 meters has a 4 percent, 1.5 percent, and the 1.5 percent, 2.5 percent with the uh, uh, sensor node and then the gateway place to the different height. Uh, the 500 meters I have tested with. Uh, 0.4, uh, sorry, 0.5 percent, 0.5 percent, and then a zero and zero percent respectively for the sensor node to the ground, uh, gateway to the ground, sensor node to the uh, to the 1.5 meters height, gateway to the one point, uh, gateway to the ground, sensor node to the ground, and gateway to the uh, 1.5 height, and then sensor node to, to the 1.5 height, and then the gateway to the 1.5 height. And then right now, because of the, uh, the truth condition, we can only achieve to the largest distance about the 800 meters. And then when we place the sensor node to the ground and then give it to a ground, we cannot receive any data. And then the sensor node to the uh, 1.5 meters and then the give it to the ground, we uh, cannot receive any data either. But uh, when we place the give it to the 1.5 meters, uh, we can uh, successfully receive the data from the sensor node. When the sensor node is placed to the ground, um, we have 5% uh, data frame loss. And then when the sensor node is placed to the one point meters height, we uh, achieve 3% of the data frame loss, which is uh, uh, you know, uh, acceptable by the, by the project. Uh, since what we want to you know, test the relay model in the project, there are uh, plenty of the testing has been done uh, with the relay model. So first of all is uh, the indoor testing. Uh, both sensor node, gateway and the relay model is placed to the 
uh, placed on the table and they, uh, each of the uh, device is kind of like 10 meters uh, distance. And in the data frame loss, we achieve is 2%. And then with the outdoor testing, uh, the distance between each of the devices is around uh, 100 meters, which means the total distance between uh, to, the, to the gateway is 200 meters. The data frame loss we achieved is zero. And then um, when the barrier is in between of the sensor node, gateway, and the relay module, we also re achieve the, the data frame loss at zero percent. Uh, and also I have testing the I have tested the the relay model in the grassland. Uh, the sensor node and the relay module placed the, uh, in between of the 70 meters, and then the relay module to the gateway placed in the 650 meters. And the, the, uh, the line distance between the sensor node and the gateway is around 700 meters. However, the sensor node and then the uh, gateway is not in the site, which, you know, blocked by the mountain or, you know, the hills. So without the reading module, we cannot achieve the communication because of the hill or the, because of a mountain. So that's why the reading module in this uh, uh, testing is really important. From this testing, we have uh, successfully demonstrated the, the relay can forward, the reading module can forward the data from the sensor node to the gateway. Um, and in the data frame loss, I have tested uh, is 10 percent, which is a little bit larger than the uh, communication without a delay. However, be because the message is transmitted from the sensor node to the relay module, then from relay to the uh, to the gateway, so that is uh, kind of uh, uh, acceptable by the project with uh, 10 percent of the data frame loss. Uh, this is the testing picture in the field on the on the trail, so we can see this uh, grass is kind of dense, and in the uh, the height is around like one to one point five meters, and then this is how I place the uh, gateway in the in the field, and then this is the how I place the the sensor node in the in the field. You can see from the picture because of the tree is really dense, so that's why for the three hundred meters. For the first uh, testing, I achieved a little bit higher data frame loss. But later, when we change the, uh, the, the location of the sensor node, and then the data frame loss re uh, reduced to a very low. And then this uh, uh, picture from the Nebraska field test, this is how I placed the sensor node and in the gateway. And then this is uh, the uh, soybean field in the Nebraska, uh, in the ne Nebraska research field. Uh, this is uh, in the corn field in there. And then for the relay module testing, this is how I place the, the sensor node, uh, the gateway, and also the relay module. The sensor node is placed to the tree, which is uh, uh, the height of 1.5 meters. And then the, the, the middle one is the relay module. And then the height is around 1.5 to 2 meters. Uh, for the last one on the most uh, right, that's the how I place the, uh, the gateway. The gateway is placed in around 1.5 meters to a tree. So last one, I'm going to give uh, uh, the conclusion of, the, of, the, of this talk. Um, many top technologies were successfully utilized uh, to create a low-power IoT event driven wireless network. Uh, the low-power LoRa radio was you know, integrated into a network of nodes that could Transmit data across a long distance, and then find the transmission range to be uh, much lower than the data advised. From the testing we have done, we achieved uh, 800 meters transmission in the wild uh, uh, circumstance. However, from this data, it can achieve you know uh, 16 kilometers, which is you know that's optical uh, optimal condition. And especially in the suboptimal agri uh, agriculture environment required for this network. Uh, the suboptimal agricultural environment means the, the temperature difference or the humidity difference. And also, we have also tested the temperature 
uh, how the temperature affects the project or how the temperature affects the communication and also the uh, the different level of humidity affects the affects the communication. And we don't see the big you know effects of the temperature and in the humidity from the uh, from previous testings. Uh, the, the the next one is successfully improve reliability and effective uh, uh, message transmission rings through the customer a uh, custom protocols. We designed the custom uh, uh, PCB, which uh, save much more power uh, than the PCB we can get from the commercial uh, product. And then uh, last one, we apply the relay module into the network to improve the usability for the variety of conditions. With the relay module, we can successfully uh, get the data transmission in a very deep, uh, in a, for example, they're, they're in, in between of the, uh, the hills condition. So that is uh, really important the part of the relay module in this project. So the last one, I'm gonna thanks to everyone in the project. Uh, you know, uh, my advisor, Dr. Miyagi, and then my previous uh, partners, Brian. Uh, Brian, he has, uh, uh, he had, you know, done a lot of work and then uh, trans uh, transmits those uh, inform uh, the knowledge to me, and also the uh, since no uh, the sensor development and uh, the amplifier development in the different groups. Um, so anyone has questions? Uh, by, by, by the way, so you, you missed uh, Professor Zhang Ling's group in the last... Oh, yes. Yeah, he his, uh, his group developed the, the linker part, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I kind of forget. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um. So... Um, the the test you have done is primarily um on this uh, kind of open area, right? Uh, yeah. But um, but I'm thinking about is there any other um applications like in the urban area for this LoRa or something? Because it seems to seems to me that LoRa is something designed for Internet of Things, right? Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm just is there any other applications in the urban area where whether the, the line of sight communication doesn't seem to be very practical there's there could be a lot of block blockages there uh, how, what, what's the performance of LoRa in, in that scenario well for those kind of uh, uh scenario of the uh, uh, not in the site i have tested a lot of uh, you know uh um i have done a lot of testings with that i mean uh, for the scenario, you know, uh, the sensor node or like a device to a device and not in the site. I mean, the, the brick buildings does not uh, block a lot of uh, signals. However, those kind of uh, hills or like uh, the soils uh, can highly block those uh, uh, signals. I and mean, I don't see many, uh, I don't see any, I don't see many like applications in the urban area. Uh, you know, use of the LoRa module. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, th I think there's a certainly no constraint on that. So LoRa was designed for long range communication. Uh, and on paper, it says that it can uh, communicate like, uh, like 12, 13 miles, uh, you know, per hop. So clearly that is not the case here. Right, so because usually that is tested uh, by under the, the the ideal condition, right, line of sight, and then there's no reflector or whatever, right. But in the practical condition, you can see that the communication distance is, is much reduced, right, it's like 700, 800 meters, right. But first of all, you know, for those are under not very ideal condition, or, you know, they're pretty bad actually, right, once, for example, sensors on the ground, and uh, you know they're like 1.5 meters for the base station. So those conditions conditions are harsh for communication, but we can still do like a few hundred of meters for communication, which is pretty good, 
Okay, so we have also done the testing for Zigbee. So that is like maybe around 100 meters or, or at least less than 200 meters probably. Okay, and for Wi-Fi, we can only transmit maybe 20 meters. Right, LoRa is still the best, right? So, you know, we can definitely use that in, uh, under urban condition. Actually, people are doing that, right? But we just need to make sure that the communication distance is not like, you know, a few miles, right? I think if it's like 100 meters or 50 meters, that'll be okay. Okay, based on our knowledge, I think lower is still the best in terms of the long range communication, but it's not like that great. Okay, and the power of LoRa is not very low. It's not very high. I think it's slightly higher than Zigbee. So, but still like it, it consumes very low power. So that is, is another constraint, right? Uh, like what Leo said, right? If you want to, you know, communicate through bricks, uh, br br bricks so that, that can be a problem. Okay. Okay, yeah. 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 Any other questions? Okay, I have a question. So can, can you show me again the, the table that you show? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so I see. So there's a, <clears throat> uh, there's um so on the, on the mid column, so it's the center node uh, on the 1.5 meters and uh, the gateway node on the ground. So it's a, like reverse. Uh-huh. Okay. And, um, and the communication <clears throat> is from the sensor node to the gateway node, right? Yes. Okay. So why yeah. we cannot communicate? <clears throat> okay, I'll, I mean... Uh, you mean for the 800 meters? Yeah, so for, <clears throat> for 800 meters, you can see that. So if the sensor node is on the high and the gateway is on the low, so we cannot communicate. But if we put it reversely, yes, uh, then we can transmit, right? What, what is the reason on that? Uh, you know, because of the uh, environment, when the gateway is placed to the ground, it is, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, kind of a small hills will block those signals. And they also <laughs> need place the gateway into the like a high uh, uh, latitude. And yeah, they, but, uh, uh, so, so you just simply <clears throat> uh, replace, I mean, exchange their position under those testing? Uh, no. So okay. the, the sensor node is placed in a certain uh, certain location, and then the the gateway is uh, placed in a certain uh, certain location. Uh, we we, we oh. if, you know kind of uh, swap the, the the positions of the sensor node and in the gateway. But the, the I mean the location of the gateway node is now changing, just the phase changing, right? Yes. Okay. But when we change the uh, the height of the gateway. We place to the ground, and then um, the sensor node and gateway is not in the line of the site because of the you know the hills uh, environment. Okay, but on the other case, when the sensor node is on the ground, gateway is one point five meters. Yes, there... so that kind of condition is line of the site. Oh, then you you can see each other. They can see. Each other. Yeah, we can get the data from uh from oh, the. Really? Okay, yeah, that, that, that's very important, right? It's kind of misleading because, you know, if you swap the position between the sensor node and the gateway node, yeah, I don't think there, there, there are much changed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, but, but you are doing in this way, okay. Yeah, so that is, uh, that is uh, uh, later we uh, implement the radio, uh, the relay module uh, for those conditions of the line, uh, not line of the site. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, great. All right, so any questions? Yeah, if we do not have any questions, let's end for today. Okay, in the next week, so based on our schedule, so uh, yeah, you will uh, present, but, but I think, you know, since you're just joined, yeah, uh, I think maybe it's better to skip you this time. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, I think it's okay. I, you know, I 
only learn the basic knowledge this month, and I don't think I can have a very profound, very good presentation this time. Yeah, maybe next time, Xiang, uh, you will present. Yeah. Okay, so next uh, next week, Xiang will present uh, the reinforcement learning. So yeah, which is a uh, pretty popular and uh, exciting topic. Xiang has a very good understanding on those topic. So yeah, it'll be pretty nice. All right. Okay, so uh, I'll see you next week. Okay, see you everyone. See you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.